all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Hallelujah. What is your hope? Is it Jesus? What is the hope of the world? It's only Jesus. My hope is Jesus, and also the hope of the world is Jesus. So wherever you are, just hold on to Jesus. There, all of your steps, the blessing of the kingdom of the throne will be upon all of your fields. Whenever, whatever the case, we just have to hold on to the name of Jesus, but that's not taking place. I bless you in the name of the Lord again. Uh, really, through the blessed worship time today, really hold on to the name of Jesus and go out. Today, the title is A Person of Faith Who Makes the Gospel Be the Gospel. What was the title of last week? The more gospel takes place, our lives change. then we must make the gospel be the gospel. I really hope that you become the person of faith. And I really hope that you stand inside of your field as a person of faith who makes the gospel be the gospel. And from there, all of the blessings and the answers of God will follow. I don't receive answers just because I did something great. Inside of the field, what they need is the gospel. So if you hold on to the gospel and go to the field, then God will make you... Uh, uh, he will raise you up. Many people are afraid of losing the things that are in front of them. But most of them, they cannot see what will come ahead of it. So the same, looking at a person and judging by their outer shell and not seeing their inner self. And most of the people, they only see the things that are in front of them and not what is behind. What if Joseph, when he was sold off, off as a slave, if he saw the problem, then he would be trembling there, and he would have lost hold of many answers. But God has planned the gospelization of Egypt through Joseph. If Joseph was inside of fear because of the problems that is in front of them, then yes, God will fulfill his covenant through Joseph, but Joseph would have had many problems. But Joseph didn't view the things that is in front of him, but he saw what will come after. Inside of the problem, he saw the plans of God and he was able to see the hidden blessings that was inside of the problem. What is the walk of faith? Inside of the problem, finding the plans of God and finding the hidden uh, blessings, it is the walk of faith. But why can we not see the plans of God? And why can we not find the hidden blessings? 
It's because most of the people, they're caught by their own thoughts and their level. I really hope that all of our Hana Church members become the people who overstand their level and become the people who change their thoughts. Not to show off or brag about, but whenever other people see us, they must be able to see that, oh, this person is the person of God. People around you must be able to see you and say, oh, this is the word of God. But this does not take place with our level or our thoughts. When you become the person of faith, that is when people see you and see that God is alive. So today Paul is talking to the Jews and the book of Hebrews it is a letter that is sent to the Hebrews. And Paul too, he was a Hebrew and he was a person who lived by the law and he was a professor in the Bible and he was a Pharisee. So he was so renowned when the world saw him and that was Paul. But Paul saw his past and his thinking. With the law, I condemned people and I persecuted the churches and I killed the believers and that's what he was come to realize. So Paul viewed everything not through the gospel but through the law. Bible only speaks of Christ. But even though he had the Bible, but he did not, he could not see Christ. That is, that is why he fell into a misconception. But on the way to Damascus, he met the Christ whom he hated and persecuted. And from then, Paul's life totally changed. And how he viewed the Bible, how he viewed the history changed. And he made this confession. He viewed the cross as a death, death sentence. So he knew the cross as a punishment and curse. But after meeting Christ, he, he viewed the cross differently. So on the place where we must, where I must die, Christ instead was crucified. And that is why he made the confession in 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And again, he says in chapter 2, verse 2, For I decided to not know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul meets Christ in, on the way to Damascus. And in the book of Rome, he was able to see that through cross, the power of salvation is given. So this was a prophesied in the Old Testament. And as promised, Jesus came. And he was crucified on the cross, and on the third day, he came to life. This is the power of Christ. And 
only Christ can is the power to solve all of the original sin. Cross is, Christ is the only way for us to meet God. Only Christ is the way to have victory over Satan and have all of our problems solved from our past, present, and future. So Paul didn't just view the Bible as just a book. He saw that power of God there. And he was able to hold on to the power of Christ who solved all of our, pro all of our sins. But uh, Paul, he saw how his people were living the way he lived. So he, from his experience, he writes a letter to the Hebrews. So it is, he's telling those people to become the person of faith. So he's telling those people, don't become the person like me from in the past. Become the person, a person of faith to make the gospel as the gospel. So in order to do that, we must become a person of faith who knows the essence of the gospel. We must become the person of faith who knows the essence of the gospel. If you see in verse 19 today, the Jewish people and the Hebrews look down on Jesus. Even same for Paul before he met the resurrected Christ. And that is why Paul speaks to the Jewish people. So to be set and liberated from the law of sin and death, is it religion or the law? Well, Paul says it is by the blood of Jesus. That is why if you see in verse 19, it says, it says, by the blood of Jesus. It's not religion. It is telling us that by the blood of Jesus, we are set free from sin and death. And if you see in verse 20, there's the curtain or the veil. It says, by the new and living way the, that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. So what is this curtain? As the people of Israel was going through the wilderness, there is something that they made so that they can worship God, and that was the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle, there is the tabernacle, and inside there is the Holy of Holies. And inside of that, there is the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Holy of Holies, they, not anyone could go in. So on the, the high priest will go inside there once a year on the day of atonement. Atonement, and from there, the word of God was proclaimed to solve all of the sins of the people. But at the time when Jesus was crucified on the cross, this curtain was split from top to bottom. If a person split it, it must be split from bottom to top, but it was split from top to bottom. So God split it. Inside of the Holy of Holies, there not anyone could go in. If you go inside, then they will be put to death. 
But on the time when Jesus was crucified on the cross, this curtain was split and anybody could go to meet God. So it says, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain. Christ has solved the problem of us being separated from God, the, that original sin. If you see in the end of verse 20, it's the curtain that is through his flesh. This was the reason why Jesus came. It is to give us salvation. He has crushed the head of Satan. He has set us free from sin and death and has given us life. And that person who did this is Christ. People who are gathered here are the people who have received salvation through Christ. If that I am, I have received salvation through the name of Christ, and if God has given and restored the image of God, then this blessing must come out from us. So, with the gospel, our imprint, root, and nature must change. And with the gospel, we must come out from the scars, we must receive answer through the gospel, and we must come to the conclusion with the gospel. And that is making the gospel the gospel. So, not, people do not, are not moved because of the gospel, but they are moved by because of other things. You must not be moved through with other things. Oh, the church is beautiful. That's not it. Oh, the church is large and we have good environment. That's not it. We must be moved by with the gospel and we must receive grace through the gospel. But we are able to see that people are not moved by the gospel. They are moved by other things and they are always hindered. Without us knowing, we keep viewing the things surrounding us. We do not see the essence, but we keep looking at the things that is not the essence. Have I received salvation through Christ? But we keep looking to the other things. Who is the disciple? Disciples are the people who follow and only listen to Christ and follow with no reason. We have received salvation through Christ, then we must come to the conclusion of Christ. Not looking to the religion and being moved by that, but we must follow only after Christ who has given us salvation. That is the gospel. We must confirm, is my heart towards God or Christ or other things? Don't be moved because of the words, the public opinions, and other things. Only come to the conclusion inside of Christ. I'll tell you again, this is very important. You have received salvation through Christ. Then you must be able to stake your life with the one word Christ, and that is the disciple. Oh, the church is helping me a lot, and no, that's not it. A person that could follow 
only with the name of Christ that is the disciple. If you are moved because of other things, then that's not the disciple. I'll tell you again. Disciples are the people who could stake their lives only with Christ. I really hope that you go inside of this essence of the gospel. Christ is the unique way, the only way, and He's complete. And He is absolute. He didn't just work in the past, but He still is now at work. And it is the power to give us life. Gospel is the power to give life. And the power to give life is inside of Christ. And being set free from sin and death is inside of Christ. And when we truly know Christ, we, are, we can have true freedom from everything. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If I don't have problems, God is here. And if I have problems, then God is not there. But many people walk their walk of faith like that. Really, think carefully. Isn't that our life? And people always resent and saying that, Oh, why, God, why did you give me this problem? But most of the people walk their walk of faith like that. But truly, enjoy the true freedom inside of Christ. If there's, it doesn't matter if there's problem or not. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And from there, true peace and true healing takes place inside of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord, who become the person of faith, who know the essence of the gospel. Secondly, we must be able to know what hinders us from us not enjoying the gospel. So we must become the person who has the power to pull out the kingpin who cannot enjoy the gospel. The gospel is correct, but it's not taking place for me. Why is that? We must find that root cause and change it. If things are not taking place for you right now, you must find that root cause and challenge. It's king pin. So if you find the reason why this war came out, if you go to the Amazons, you can see great trees. And you can see the people who live in Amazon, they will go and cut down the trees. And when you cut the trees and when you send it off on land, they, the trees will crack and they will split, so they will just drift away the logs. But if you send it off and drift it away in the river, then it will be stopped because of other trees or, or rocks. Then because of that one log that stopped, the logs that come after will all be stopped. Mm -hmm. 
but there is a process where a person comes and takes away the locks. And through that, many people die and accidents occur. So this one person figured it out. So he found out the reason why this log was put to stop. So he just took out that one thing and all of the logs uh, drifted away in the river. And that first log that stopped, we call that the king pin. We must pull out that king pin so that uh, that is hindering us from enjoying the gospel. Inside of us, there is this kingpin that hinders us from enjoying the gospel. And we must pull that out. We must pull out the kingpin that is breaking down our life. And we must pull out that kingpin which hinders and confuses the churches. And there is the kingpin that makes us confused and makes us depressed. And there is a kingpin that uh, puts my life into discouragement. Everybody has a scar that is inside of them, but if this scar is not healed, then we cannot have spiritual growth. So, in the original days, but we listen to the word of God. But when we fall into trial, we cannot give worship, and we call that the kingpin. We became the child of God, and we came to a blessed place. But this is not being connected with my life. Why is that? We must uproot that kingpin. It is usually because of our thoughts, and because of the spiritual things, and because of our life. We have received salvation, but this is not being connected with our life. And we all have wrong thoughts and my scars. Because of that, we fall into misconception and again, receive scars. We must uproot that. So there is that kingpin which hinders us for from enjoying the gospel. We must remove that. So with our strength, that's not possible. So that is why we must go inside of the grace of God. What is worship? Through worship, we receive the word of God. The moment you realize, oh, this is the word of God, and receive grace, then the kingpin inside of us are uprooted. The things that is hindering us from enjoying the gospel, that thing is uprooted when we receive grace through worship. And we emphasize training. Why do we do that? Is the gospel that we have received not complete? That's not it. The gospel that we have received is complete. But uh, there is something that is hindering us from enjoying this. And there are things that we must renew. And we cannot enjoy this because our vessel is too small. That is why we go inside of training and going inside of training, we have all of that things and all of the wrong things that is inside of us renewed. And even today we have another training that is taking place. So it is the training for our believers to have spiritual growth. About 230 people register for this training. So starting from the basics, going all the way to knowing the Bible. 
this training is taking place. So at that time, we must stop every, doing everything else. We must go all in inside of that training. And God will absolutely let, find, uh, let us figure out the things that is not taking place and open up the doors. And there is a group for the disciples and the elders wanted to receive training first. So the elders came to me and uh, asked me a request and saying, can we receive training first? When the elders receive training, then the, all of the believers will follow and all of the remnants will see that and follow. I believe that we will become the people prepared for God with this training. And right now, there's so many words that is flying around inside of the church, and we receive scars because of that. Many of the people are receiving scars because of words of other people. God knew the natures of the Israelites. That is why God told them not to speak when they were walking around the wall of Jericho. So, with the Ark of the Covenant, go around the wall of Jericho. It means follow after the word of God and inside of prayer, walk around the wall. And on the seventh day, at once, yell out. So we must be able to speak when we must and we must stop speaking at the time when we are not supposed to. Really be guided inside of prayer. And before you speak, think, is this the work of the Holy Spirit or not? Don't speak the words to give scars to others, but really speak the words of the gospel. You have times when you are in complaint, and at that time, just close your mouth. But when we open our mouth, 100% a problem will occur. And when you speak those words, other people will receive scars. When you're angry, don't speak. Just don't say anything. When you're angry at your children, when try talking to them. Only your bad feelings will be relayed to your children. It's just as giving them poison. But after time passes, if you just steadily speak to them, then they will understand. There are so many children who have received scars because of the words of their parents. If you just have knowledge in speaking, then 90% of the problems that happen in the side of the church will be solved. Word speaks about uh, their their characteristics, and we must have our priorities changed. If you see in verse twenty-four, it says, 
and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. There are people who do things who do things that can postpone later on, but they do that right now. If we keep on thinking about our uh, our benefits, then we cannot do the things that must come prior. And we keep losing hold of the prior things. So, what hinders us from enjoying the gospel, we must find that first and uproot that. And we must challenge, holding on to the essence of the gospel, which is Christ, and we must challenge. That is why we go inside of training. I'll come to the end of my words. There is the partisan that God has given us through Christ. And there is the journey. And there is the guidepost. And we must go inside of the prayer to enjoy those. Then at that time, the kingpin that hinders us from enjoying the gospel will be uprooted. the kingpin that is hindering us from enjoying the gospel when we go inside of prayer and holding on to the partisan and guidepost then we uh, the journey then we the kingpin that hinders us from enjoying the gospel will be uprooted so pastor the people ask pastor what is the partisan what is the journey and what is the guidepost look that up and inside of that there is all the blessings of God we must hold on to the things that Christ has given us and pray it's not the word that is just given to us when we hold on to the partisan journey and guidepost when we go inside a deep prayer the things that is inside of us that hinders us from enjoying the gospel will be uprooted. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you become the people who really become the person of faith to make the gospel the gospel.